Hello everyone. This side Saloni Magil, and today we are going to study reflection of light, or you can call it just light. So light is a source of energy. We cannot see anything if that object does not persist any kind of reflection of light or light over it. And we know that sun is the main source of energy. Sun is the main source of light, and it is the only natural source of light. Okay, so in physics, this term light refers to the electromagnetic radiations that have any wavelength. That can be of any wavelength. So, what are electromagnetic radiations? These are the radiations generated by an electromagnet. So, these radiations could be visible or could not be visible. Okay, so let's carry on with this topic. We will study nature of light. In this, we have two theories. One is the wave theory, and the another is the particle theory. In wave theory, the object travels in the form of waves, and it does not need any medium to travel, like uh, solid, liquid, gas. Secondly, the particle theory of light. So, what is particle theory of light? According to this theory, the particles they move in a straight line at very high speed. So, in the as you can see in sunlight, there are various dust particles that move very at very high speed. You cannot catch them or just capture them. They are too fast. Right? So, these, these were the two theories, wave theory and particle theory. These theories are the nature of light. So, they depict the nature of light. That what kind of light is. Now, we will study the reflection of light. As you have studied it earlier in before classes, in your earlier classes, uh, it is the sending back of light rays which fall on any object. So, here is a picture which depicts a sun rays being sent to the ground. This is a, you know, a reflecting surface and those rays are sent back to their exact medium where they were. So, reflection is a process of sending back of light rays which fall on any object. So, this is the object here, this green colored thing is an object here and uh, as the sunlight falls on it, it reflects it back. Now, let us come to the reflection of light from plane surfaces. So, it is a plane mirror. Okay, first I will make you understand what is a plane mirror. We have seen mirrors before, right? So, in physics, how we show a mirror? We just draw a straight line and some slanting lines at the back of it. These slanting lines depict that this part of the mirror does not reflect light and the either this side of the mirror reflects the light. So, the light rays which fall on the mirror the light rays which fall on the mirror are called incident rays. If any light falls on a mirror, then that ray will be called as incident ray because that ray is incident to the mirror. And the ray which is reflected back by the mirror is called reflected ray. So, it must be clear what are incident rays and reflected rays. And between that, there is a imaginary line called normal which is perpendicular to the mirror right now let's see what is this i and r these are the angles made by the incident ray and reflected ray okay the incident ray makes an angle i with the mirror i with the normal and r reflected ray okay so in this I is the angle of incidence and R is the angle of reflection. Now, let's move to the next topic. Laws of reflection of light. So, we will study some laws related to the reflection of light. So, first law is the angle of incidence is always equal to the angle of reflection. So, I told you earlier angle I is angle of incidence. And angle R is angle of reflection. So, 
according to the first law i is equal is always equal to r that means angle of incidence this angle is always equal to this angle that is angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection here we can see this is the incident ray and this is the reflected ray that is sent back by the plane mirror this blue color thing is a plane mirror and this red maroon line which is perpendicular to the plane mirror is called normal you can also uh, write it as capital n so first law must be clear it is the angle of incidence must always be equal to the angle of reflection now let's come to the second law second what does second law says the incident ray the reflected ray and the normal all lie in the same plane and the frequency and speed of light remains unchanged this says that the incident ray which we have noticed here this incident ray this is the incident ray this is the reflected ray and this is normal they all lie in a same plane this means that they does not come out of the plane you must have studied x and y axis so you always also study the x and y plane so x and y plane they both are in a x and y axis they both are in a same plane and uh, you will study it in further classes they will teach you z axis as well so z axis is coming out of that surface like the this is let us suppose this is our uh, y axis and this is our x axis so where will y, z axis will be it will come out of the screen so the z axis is not in a same plane and what i wanted to explain you was the angle of incidence sorry the incident ray and the reflected ray and normal they all lie in a same plane they do not just jumble out each other so this was our second law also the frequency and speed of light remains unchanged so uh, let us suppose the speed of light when it falls on the surface is let us suppose it is x so it will not change when it is reflected back it will be remain it will remain x only and its frequency will also be the same so they will not get changed now we will study the types of reflection we have two types of reflection one is the regular reflection another is the diffuse reflection you can call diffuse reflection as irregular reflection also you will understand this now first is regular reflection so how can regular reflection be a reflection be understood so when multiple incident rays fall on a smooth surface a straight surface then they are reflected back and the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection in our regular reflection okay so in regular reflection when a parallel beam of light is incident on a smooth surface so this is a smooth surface a plane surface it is not jumbled or uneven surface it is a plane surface so the incident rays are reflected back into the parallel beam of light then this phenomenon is known as the regular reflection and a plane mirror that always produces a regular reflection of light now let's come to the diffuse reflection when a beam of light falls on a rough surface so you can see it is a uneven surface or you can call it rough surface so when beam of light falls on the uneven surface then they are scattered away into multiple directions so these directions are not fixed in that in which direction they are going to be so in diffuse re reflection you can also call it irregular reflection because the because of the unevenness of the surface and multiple direction scattering of the reflected rays this is diffuse reflection now let us understand what are objects and images so anything which gives out light rays is an object right so let us take an example let us suppose that sun is an object so sun has its own light 
whereas the table does not has its own light unless and until some light rays are projected to that table it won't be visible so what i wanted to say that the object may or may not have its own light so the outcome is the object is anything which gives out light rays and what is an image it is an optical appearance produced when light rays coming from an object are reflected from a mirror so when light rays of an object meets the mirror then it is reflected back and an image is formed which is an optical appearance so this must be clear let us let us move to our next topic so images are of two kinds one is the real image and another is virtual image so real images can be obtained on a screen the images that can be obtained on a screen and we can see them are called real images whereas virtual images are the images which cannot be obtained on screen so example for a real image can be cinema screens image formed on the cinema screens you can see the actors over the screen so their image is real image whereas when we see ourselves in the mirror then that image the image is virt virtual image clear now the position of a image formed in a plane mirror so what is the position of a image in a plane mirror image is as far as the object from the mirror it can be understood just read it out the image formed in a plane mirror is at the same distance behind the mirror as the object is in front of the mirror so the difference between the mirror and the object and the mirror and the image is same let us suppose the distance between mirror and object is x meter so the difference between mirror and image will also be x meter in case of a plane mirror we are talking about a plane mirror not spherical or any other mirror okay so there comes a phenomena called lateral inversion you are very familiar with this term so what is lateral inversion let us take an example you must have seen an ambulance there in that on that ambulance it is inverted ambulance written on it is inverted so as to when someone sees it in a mirror they can just read it properly so let us see when a object is placed in front of a mirror then the right side appears to be left side of the image and the line left side of the object appears to be the right side of the image this changes between the object and its image is known as lateral inversion so there is one one more example for lateral inversion when you look into the mirror and you raise your right hand then your image in the mirror raises raises its left hand and vice versa so this is lateral inversion that okay now let's come to the uses of plane mirror there are numerous uses of plane mirror they are used in making periscopes we can look at our faces through mirrors and uh, you can they are used uh, used at blind turns they are just uh, put at a pole so that we can see the be car or anything coming from behind us and also they are used as shopping malls and as i told you there are numerous uses of plane mirror the reflection of light from curved surfaces so what are what can be curved surfaces they can be spherical mirrors so when a beam of light falls on a plane mirror it is reflected as a parallel beam so as i have told you earlier that when a beam of light is parallel to a plane mirror or a plane surface then it is reflected as a parallel beam so the plane mirror changes only the direction of incident rays it does it does not converge or diverge the parallel rays of light so this line means that the plane mirror only changes the direction of the incident light rays it does not con converge or diverge the parallel rays of light converge means to uh, when rays 
all the rays just meet at a single point converging means when all the light rays meet at a single point and what does diverging means diverging means when multiple rays are diverge when they are spread okay a spherical mirror is that mirror whose reflecting surface is the part of a hollow sphere of glass so what is a spherical mirror you must have seen balls a ball is sphere in shape so a spherical mirror is a sphere made of mirror which is hollow from inside okay so it must be clear what is a spherical mirror now let's move on there are two types of spherical mirrors one is concave mirror and the another is convex mirror you must have heard their names they have many applications now we study concave mirror first concave mirror is that spherical mirror in which the reflection of light takes place at the concave surface or bent in surface this means up let's have a look this is a piece of hollow sphere we have cut the hollow sphere into a part so this blue color is a part of that hollow sphere okay hollow spherical mirror this is a mirror okay silver coating protected by paint so this blue part in this blue part there will be no reflection of light okay and in this part okay where incident light is falling this part will conduct all the reflection things okay reflection of light takes place at the concave surface so this is the concave surface there is a difference between concave mirror and convex mirror okay this is the coating surface means this there here no reflection will take place and here all the reflection will take place so concave mirror is a bent in surface you can see it is bent in okay now we will study concave mirror convex mirror convex mirror is that spherical mirror in which reflection of light takes place at the convex surface or bulging out surface you can have a look here it is a bulged out surface okay it is a bulged out surface convex mirror are used in cars you must have seen it is written there objects in the mirror are closer than they than they appear you must have seen in the mirrors of the car okay so they use convex mirror okay convex mirror shows the object more closer to itself center of curvature radius of curvature pole and principal axis these are four different different things center of curvature radius of curvature pole and principal axis of a spherical mirror so we have studied about two mirrors that is concave mirror and concave convex mirror so what are these all four things in those mirrors so have a look this is a concave mirror here this shaded region is non reflecting surface and this part is reflecting surface okay so this is a concave mirror uh, we have drawn an imaginary line these dotted lines are imaginary lines and this this part is cut right so the center of this whole hollow sphere this is a hollow sphere we have studied about spherical mirror this is a sphere and this is the imaginary line this dotted line is an imaginary line this is a concave mirror so the center of this concave mirror this um, spherical ball is center of curvature okay and we have drawn an imaginary line cutting this into two equal parts you can see there are two equal parts this part and this part so this whole thing is cut by a single line that is called principal axis principal axis is a imaginary line okay and now what is radius of curvature okay what is radius of curvature before understanding radius of curvature we need to understand what is pole so pole is the center of this concave mirror center of curvature is the center of this whole imaginary sphere and pole is the center of this concave mirror okay and same is with the convex mirror but the position of all the things is different except pole and radius of curvature so it is this side this side this side in concave convex mirror this side it is a reflecting surface and in concave mirror this side it is a 
reflecting surface okay so let's carry on with this topic so these concave and convex mirrors are divided into converging or diverging mirrors okay concave mirror is a diverging converging mirror and convex mirror is a converging mirror never get confused between converging and diverging converging means when all the rays of light reflect back at a single point okay they converge at a single point then it is a converging mirror and a, and a converging mirror is a concave mirror okay and diverging mirror diverging means when all the light rays diverge they spread out then it is a convex mirror okay thanks for watching the video if you have any doubts related to the video or any topic you can ask in the comment section thanks